So in previous videos, we checked the valve clearances, we determined that they were wrong. In fact, that they were so tight that in some of them there was no measurable clearance, even with a very thin feeler gauge. Um, so what we did then is we went through and we checked all of the valve clearances and we wrote down their actual clearance. The actual measurable gap between the cam and the top of the bucket. Now, from here, we need to adjust them. Now, I've already adjusted cylinder 4 and cylinder 3. So we just have 1 and 2 left to go. Uh, I did 3 and 4 because at this end of things, you guys don't get to see all that much action. Um, you won't see a great deal on number 2 either. But after we've adjusted four valves, you'll certainly get the idea. So, I have my little magnetic proddy tool, and I'm using that to remove the buckets. Now, underneath those buckets is a shim, and so far, invariably, they've all been stuck inside the bucket, fortunately. That just means that we're not likely to lose them. And that shim looks like that. Now you probably won't be able to see this, but you might get a glimmer of it. In the middle of the bucket is actually a raised bump, about the same size as the shim. And that just stops, if the shim is very um, very thin, that just stops the, the bucket from rubbing directly on top of the valve spring. So this shim here actually sits on the top of the valve spring in a recess. And this is how we adjust the valve the clearances. We, we change the thickness of this shim. So let's look at this. We'll call this number two left because <laughs> it's on the left as we're facing it. Um, according to what I wrote down, the actual clearance on this particular valve was 0.12. The clearance has to be 0.16. So I've gotten myself my digital verniers. Um, because they're accurate enough for what we want to do. And we measure the thickness of the existing shim. And that is 2 2.09. 2.09. Nice and easy. So when we measured the valve clearance on number two left, it was 0.12. Now the valve clearance should be 0.16. So we need to reduce, because we need to make the valve clearance wider, we need to reduce the size of this shim by about 0.4. When you buy a kit full of shims, or even individual shims, both are available, uh, they generally tend to go in sizes uh, that jump up by 0.05. So you might have uh, the kit that I have starts at 1.2 zero and goes all the way to 3.5 and it goes 1.20, 1 1.25, 1 1.30, 1 1.35 and so on. So you really can only adjust the valves in 
0.05 increments anyway. So our shim here is about 2.08, 2.09. Um, I would expect that what we're actually looking at is a 2.1 shim that's slightly warm. Um, we need to change the clearance on this valve by 0.4, so a shim of about 2.05 should do the job. Now, when you're selecting your shim, doesn't hurt to go slightly wider. So if you work out that you need a shim that's 2.07 um, because you they're never gonna the valve clearances will never change exactly by 0.05 obviously. Um, if you need a shim that's 2.07 um, all of these valves are tightened up so that tells me that this motor um, is has valve, tends to have valve recession, the gaps get narrower, so we would go to a 2.05 shim rather than a 2.10 shim. Clear as mud? So in this instance, having cleaned it up a bit, it's 2.07. Probably can't see that there. For this particular valve, we need to make it wider by 0.04 because the measured valve clearance is 0.12 and we need it to be 0.16. So in this instance, I'm going to go for a 2mm shim. That's what we'll pop in there. Selecting a 2mm shim. I'll pop that shim back into the recess of the valve. Check the bucket to make sure that there's, it's remained clean. And just giving it a light coat of oil. Okay, and then we're going to go to number two right. Once again, nice and gently. Uh, just a footnote that if you drop anything down the cam tunnel, you need to get it back. Okay, so. Get it back usually means dismantling the engine. Uh, the magnetic tool that I have, that's useful. I certainly wouldn't dismantle the engine until I stuffed it down there for a, a reasonable amount of time to try and recover whatever I dropped. Um, the bucket will probably be easy to recover. Uh, the shim on the other hand, that can travel a long way with a bit of a rattle. So, clearance on number two right was 0.12 again. So these two valves walk quite consistently. This shim is 2.1 and we need to adjust it by 0.04 because the clearance should be 0.16 but it measures at 0.12 so we need 16 minus 12 is point it is 4 that's 0.04 we need to go skinnier so we'll go to this is a 2.10 shim we'll go to a 2.05 there's no issue with reusing second hand shims by the way I don't know if I mentioned that it's not a problem unless they're damaged or there's obvious wear um, they'll be fine Oops. Popping that in top of the recess again. Nice. Once 
once again check our bucket for dirt uh, people who there are some people who might be thinking well why aren't you pulling all of this stuff out and cleaning it if you work clean you will actually if you if you pull everything out and clean it you will end up with a dirtier motor than having um, simply working clean in the first place. Clean hands, clean tools, clean everything. So that's number two right done. So we're really starting to get into the ones that you guys can see. Once again, this is number one left, we'll call it. She comes, they're all coming quite easily too, by the way. And I'm putting my thumb there to catch that shim. And there she is. Now, this one was 0.10 that we measured it. And we measured the clearances. This shim is 2.1. Now this is a bit of a dilemma because if we go slightly, if we go to 0.15, that would mean the 2.05 shim. If we go to point, if we go to a 2 millimeter shim, we will end up with a slightly too wide gap. would be 0.20 instead of 0.16 so we can either go fractionally fractionally narrow or probably too wide so this is a bit of a dilemma I think we'll go to probably too wide because uh, over a period of time these, these gaps will close anyway I'm fairly sure these clearances will tighten up. Right. So popping him in the recess. Again, check what the bucket's clean. Coat of oil. And in she goes. Ah, now, if we actually measured one of the gaps and it was too wide. If the clearance was too wide, say it was 0.2 instead of 0.16, um, we would be going to a thicker shim to change the clearance. Clear as mud. And lucky last. You guys probably should be able to see the little recess on this valve where the, the shim sits. Now this one was one of the, the real gems. This one measured at 0.03. Oh, so we need to adjust this valve quite significantly. So the shim measures at 2.12. Two millimeter shim would 
can we do it this bottom? If you drop a shot shim down the spark plug hole, cylinder head off. <laughs> That's if you can't get it out with your magnetic grab tool, which you do have a chance of doing because the shims are magnetic, but the piston top is not. So it is quite possible that you could put your little magnetic um, stick down there and retrieve the situation. But if you do drop a shim down the spark plug hole until you get it out, do not start the motor. Oh. That, that would just create absolute bedlam. So there we go. There's all of our valves done. And we just need to once again check that there is no dirt on this bucket. Get in a light coating of oil. Last thing we're going to do before we grab the camshaft is on these here, one, two, three, four. They're actually the bearings that the camshaft runs on. A little bit of oil never hurt it down there. Either. all of our valves adjusted. Now, because there were some of them where I was only guessing at the clearance, um, definitely I'll be rechecking these. I don't expect them all to be spot on. Um, an accurate initial measurement means that your final answer will be accurate. Easy as that.